to construct a deep learning model that can be used for solving multi-class classification using TensorFlow and Keras in Python. So in this tutorial, in this video, we will see how to construct a multi-layer neural network model and then how to tune all of the parameters or most of the parameters for this model to enhance the performance and then we will end by evaluating the model and see how it performs. Uh, let's get started with the data set. So that we will use for this example a well-known data set that's called Iris data set. It's flowers data set that it's available in, in this link. But in general, the description for this data set is it includes four different features, which are the spell, uh, the spell, uh, sepal length and sepal width, the petal length and width, and then the class. So the class will be one of three classes. It will be uh, uh, one of the following three uh, classes that we would like to classify based on the dimensions of the sepal and the petal of the flower. I want to emphasize that you need to install uh, TensorFlow 2.0.0 and make sure you, all, you have this version in specific. The dataset is already available with sklearn, so you can download it also from sklearn. Now, we will start by importing all of the required packages, and they are similar to the packages that I imported in previous videos, so will not go in details in, uh, about these packages and functions. In cell 2, we are using the random seed just to, to be able to replicate the same experiment. We loaded the data in cell 3, and the data is already available as a CSV file, uploaded to Canvas page of the course. As you see, the data set is, it varies in the uh, ranges of each variable, so you may need to no, uh, rescale the data before we proceed in neural network. <clears throat> we displayed the shape of the data set and it looks like we have 150 different examples, 150 rows and 5 different columns, which are 4 features and one column is the class label. And the class label is either 0, 1 or 2. Now we try to display the information about uh, the uh, uh, the data frame that we have and it looks like the data type of all data points are float so they are numbers and they are floating point numbers which is uh, which means they are ready to start being consumed within our models we try to see how many missing values we have within our data set and it looks like we do not have any missing data points so therefore we do not need to apply any imputation to uh, clear the missing data points or not available data points. Then I like to shuffle the data because the data it looks like the data is already organized or sorted by target. So I would like to shuffle it. So I use the sample function to shuffle the data and make sure it's uh, randomly sorted or ordered. Let's split the data and use 60% of the data for training and 40% for testing and uh, validation. So this will generate 120 data points for uh, training and 30 for testing and cross-validation that we split into 50-50, 50% each. So we end up with 15 examples for cross-validations and 15 examples for uh, testing. The, dimension of the dimensions of the data are 120 uh, rows for training, 15 for testing, and 15 for cross-validation. We plot the correlation or the relationship between each pair of uh, the variables in my data set so we can look at uh, any abnormality or anything that requires more or closer attention. Then we try to look at some statistics. So as I said, we, we see in here that the data is uh, requires some scaling to be similar ranges. Sim the maximum values are, they are varies from uh, one variable to another as well as the minimum. So therefore, we would like to normalize it before we proceed. So to normalize it, before we normalize it, we 
uh, try to uh, remove and save the labels for each split so we save them in, in variables and then uh, we would like to change the representation of our labels so now our labels are numbered from 1, 2 or 3 it's just a single digit in neural network if you remember in the class we talked about the input must match the output and neural network we will use the output exactly the same as the number of classes so the maximum number of classes within this data set is 3 so therefore we want our uh, uh, output to be 3 as well as the number or the, num the, the each class will have a dimension of 3 or a vector of 3 elements so we represent them with something that's called a one hot encoding the one hot encoding it will take the maximum number of variables like our labels are 0, 1 and 2 and if the label is 2 it will uh, assign the column, the second column or column 2 to be 1 and the rest are uh, zeros if we have one example has the label of 0 so the 0 will be 1 and the rest will be zeros uh, if we have it as uh, 1 so the second column will be 1 which is the corresponding to 1 and the rest will be zeros so to, to use this type of encoding or one hot encoding we will use pandas.getDummies and this get dummies will convert our um, label into the corresponding uh, one hot encoding label so we process the three uh, labels and we added the prefix just to differentiate so I do not have a column name as a number so we added, appended some text so now all of our labels are in three uh, columns each so therefore they uh, so they match the output of the neural network let's pre-process the data by subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation across all of our uh, splits and then display sample from the data set again the index is uh, the index is uh, not sorted which is good because we shuffled our data at the beginning to make sure that the data is randomly ordered let's build a neural network so our neural network will include one input layer and one hidden layer only so we do not have or sorry one output layer we do not have an, any hidden layers so feel free to add any hidden layers as we have seen it in the uh, regression video so in the regression video we added multi multiple uh, label multiple hidden layers so feel free to do that so our model starts with the sequential then the input layer which you must provide the input shape and we made the input shape as uh, uh, the shape of the second uh, size within our data set which will be the number of features which will equals to 4 and then we have 16 neurons the output layer it will have number of neurons or number of output the output must match the maximum number of classes in our data set in our data set we have 3 classes so therefore we set it to be 3 the activation function is called softmax and this softmax will make sure that our output is a probability and it adds up to 1. The learning rate, we set the learning rate to be 0 0.001. This is an initial value. Feel free to change it later on. The optimizer is a ADAM with a learning rate. I listed the list of available uh, optimizers within Keras and TensorFlow and the list of activations that you can use as well with the layers then we compiled our model the loss function that we used uh, for with our model uh, was the categorical uh, cross entropy and this is what's commonly used for multi-class classifiers the optimizer will be the optimizer that we used in here ADAM with the learning rate and the metrics that we will use for measuring how the model is performing during training and afterward will be the accuracy then we returned our model we would like to train for 100 epochs initially so we can see how is the results and then we can play with this parameter the batch size is 16 and you can change it later on as needed 
we created the model by calling the function that creates the model and return it and then we printed a summary for the model just to see what's the structure of the model then we fit our model and we use a CPU to fit our model and when we fit it we use the training data set the labels of the training data set batch size, epoch, verbose and shuffle equals true that means shuffle the shuffle the data randomly after each epoch uh, step pair epoch I just took the, the total number of data points divided by the batch size the validation data will be the normalized uh, validation data set as well as the corresponding labels as you see this is our uh, neural network architecture it's 16 layers and 3 output which will have uh, 131 uh, different variables this is the training of our data set results this is the loss of the training this is the accuracy of the training and this is the validation <coughs> loss and the validation accuracy so we trained it initially for 100 epochs and feel free to change that and increase it later on as needed now it's done <coughs> let's see an example of the history so we save the history of the training and we converted that into pandas and use, as you see it in here there is a loss accuracy validation loss and validation accuracy these are these two are for the training data set and these for the validation data set now <coughs> let's try to to classify the last 10 examples in the training in the testing data set and see the results so this is the results and show the training <coughs> how it, it it performed and it looks like we are our uh, accuracy is improving and it's increasing by time on the cross validation as well as the training data set which means the model is learning similarly we see the loss value the loss value is being decreased so this plot is the accuracy and this one is the loss so the loss is decreasing that means the error is uh, being reduced and the model is learning well as you see in here the loss value <coughs> Is still decreasing so we may want to increase the number of epochs and train it for a hundred more epochs so to to be 200 epochs in total the accuracy on the training data set is 80 percent and surprisingly the accuracy for the validation data set is 87 and this is due to that the uh, validation data set and the testing data set are very small so therefore the accuracy is not uh, it changes very frequently so this is 87 for uh, validation and 87 for testing now let's look at the confusion matrix we try to plot the confusion matrix for all of the uh, for all of the testing uh, examples so what we have done we imported confusion matrix from SQLN from matrices and then we created a plot and then we predicted the labels for the testing data set and we saved the predicted classes, predicted labels and then we retrieved the maximum value from the probabilities to be the uh, actual or the predicted label we saved these predicted uh, results and argmax it's a function that will return the index so it applies on a, a data frame or on an array and this will retrieve the index of the largest element within the array then we use the confusion matrix with the test labels which are the labels before the encoding and this is why you see the one in here and then the predicted results this will create the, confu create the confusion matrix and we depicted that using a heat map from the seaborn and then we added some titles just to depict an illustration purposes so this is a true positive and these are the correctly classified data points that has been classified correctly and as you see most of our data points are on the diagonal which means the accuracy is good so this is how we construct a multi-class classifier using a neural network with python using keras and tensorflow packages thank you